morning children yesterday we started with the chapter respiration in organisms so here we'll just have small recap of the questions that we have discussed why do we respire where does the energy comes from why should we eat regularly what does the air contains and last types of respiration i hope children you have understood all these questions and so we can proceed further before ending up the session i asked you one question do anaerobic respiration takes place in human beings or not for this the answer is yes it takes place in human beings also but when it takes place in human beings it is said that our muscle are cramping so here often you might have seen people telling that they get muscle cramps after heavy exercise so to understand this you will be knowing that either you will understand that anaerobic respiration takes place here within the muscles when our muscle cells they respire anaerobically during the partial breakdown of the glucose what happens here there is production of lactic acid and due to this the accumulation of the lactic acid takes place within the muscles and they cramp when these muscles they cramp we feel uneasy and we feel pain so to overcome the pain we often take hot bath or hot massage for this what happens with this hot massage is the circulation of the blood improves which as a result of the supply of oxygen within the muscle cells also increases and this results in the complete oxidation of lactic acid and thus resulting in the release of energy as well as carbon dioxide and water so children the next question is breathing or else we can say the next topic is breathing as i said breathing is a part of respiration during breathing there are two processes which are simultaneously taking place the first one is inhalation and the second one is exhalation during inhalation we take in air which is rich in oxygen within the body and during exhalation we give out the oxygen we give out the air which is rich in carbon dioxide from our body but before starting with these two processes i'll tell you that breathing is a continuous process because in this breathing process we see that it is an involuntary physical process and here the action is controlled by our brain during this process when we breathe the body receives a constant supply of fresh air and as soon as we breathe out our body gives out carbon dioxide which is produced within our body and is removed out so this exhaling and inhaling of the air takes place and accordingly vice versa the oxygen and carbon dioxide also is given and taken in during this process of breathing our chest cavity also increases in size our lungs they expand and the flow of the air within the lungs also increases and the diaphragm they flattens so during the process of inhalation the diaphragm contracts and flattens 
volume of the chest size increases lungs they expand and the air is forced within the lungs but in the process of exhalation diaphragm relaxes and becomes dome shaped volume of the chest cavity decreases lungs they contract and the air is forced out of the lungs during the process of breathing we take in lot of air children those who are very small their breathing rate is very high whereas the children which are going to be adult their breathing rate is much less it is because the children are very active similarly in females the breathing rate is much faster as compared to that of the males now the question comes up what is this breathing rate it is the number of times a person breathes within a minute okay so for this it includes both inhalation as well as exhalation when we talk of rate of breathing it is the change that according to the requirement of the oxygen by the body takes place we breathe rapidly when we play outdoor when we perform some activities and why it takes place because our body requires more of oxygen at this time but at the time of rest we often breathe 14 to 16 times in a minute but as soon as we perform some activity such as running or playing it increases over to 60 times per minute so children here i have given one activity and looking at those six activities you can just tell among these six activities which will be the fastest and which will be the slowest now comes your holding of the breath sometimes you might have seen people they close their eyes sorry they close their nose as well as they close their mouth that means they do not allow the air to enter or to exit so in that way they are holding the breath they hold the air whatever they have but this is only possible for a very short duration so one should not try for it here also i have given you an activity why we have to breathe very heavily after holding the breath for a short time or else for a short period of time when we talk of breathing at that time our chest size also increases and decreases why it is taking place because the diaphragm contracts and relaxes at this time when the diaphragm contracts it flattens and increases the space inside the chest cavity this makes you breathe in and so your chest rises up but as soon as when the diaphragm relaxes it decreases the space inside the chest cavity and this makes you breathe out air and so our chest moves inward next is how do we breathe so for this there are various organs with our human body we have mouth we have nostril we have pharynx we have trachea we have bronchi we have lungs and we have the diaphragm during this process of breathing these organs they play a very important role and these organs they help 
in the process of respiration when we talk of respiration these organs all together work and perform the function of respiration so during this process we take in the air from our nose or else sometimes we take in the air from our mouth but basically we take the air from the nose in human beings it is said these nostrils are the external openings which allow the air within our air cavity the hairs which are present within the nostrils they trap the dust particles which are present and which are inhaled inside the air these nostrils have mucus which is a moistened which is in moistened form and it traps the germs the blood circulation through the nose warms the inhaled air and it helps in keeping the area either the passage of the nasal cavity clean and warm nasal cavity is the passage from the nostril through which the air moves after the nasal cavity comes the pharynx it is the region of the nasal cavity that leads into the trachea and it is called pharynx after pharynx we have a gut which is an opening called the glottis which gets covered by the epiglottis when we eat or drink after the trachea we have these tracheas which gets divided up into two tube called the bronchi and which enters into our lungs thus the air travels from the lungs from these trachea into the lungs and finally reaches the lungs through our bronchi and it further gets divided up into many tiny branches called the bronchioles these bronchioles which further gives rise to tiny sac like sac like structure called the alveoli which gives appearance of the bunch of the grapes these alveoli provides a larger space or the area for easy and faster exchange of the gases the wall of the alveoli is very thin and here the diffusion of the gases takes place through these walls alveoli have a rich supply of blood through which a network of dense capillary is present all around it which is further taken up into the lungs which is the main respiratory organ these lungs are situated on the either side of the chest cavity lungs are pink in color spongy because of the presence of the air space and also the blood capillaries which are filled with the blood to protect it we have a covering of the rib cage which is supported by a large flat muscles at the door of the chest cavity called the diaphragm so children today we'll stop here at the system of respiration and we'll have a short recap of the same from the session we studied about the muscle cramps breathing breathing rate and how do we breathe and the mechanism along with the organs that are involved within the process of respiration so children for you all a show very easy home assignment and that is you will draw and label the figure of of respiratory system and this you will be showing to your teacher when the school reopens thank you